trail. We're thinking it's time for a new washer and dryer. Do you want stackable or side by side? We're configured for both, thankfully. What do you prefer, honey? Stacking will just be good for Absolutely, and I could have that built over the weekend. So then. That's Dr. Livery. Take the trail test drive and try out our live appliances in store. With over 50 brands to choose from, we have something for every budget and lifestyle. Trail appliances. Your home, your style. Trail. We're thinking it's time for a new washer and dryer. Do you want stackable or side by side? We're configured for both, thankfully. What do you prefer, honey? Stacking will just be a good thing. Absolutely, and I could have that built over the weekend. So then. That's Dr. Livery. Take the trail test drive and try out our live appliances in store. With over 50 brands to choose from, we have something for every budget and lifestyle. Trail appliances. Your home, your style. Welcome to Trail. We're thinking it's time for a new washer and dryer. Do you want stackable or side by side? We're configured for both, thankfully. What do you prefer, honey? Stacking will just be a good thing. Absolutely, and I could have that built over the weekend. So then. That's Dr. Livery. Take the Trail test. of our Culture Takes Six cooking series hosted by EverythingGoesVirtual.com. My name is Monica and I'm the MC for today. West Coast Cuisine with Wine Pairing is the fourth episode of the series and we're excited to bring Okanagan to Vancouver. In fact, we have invited Chef Alisa Feldes and Wine Director Graham McDonald from Phantom Creek Estates to join us. They actually traveled all the way from Oliver, BC in the beautiful Okanagan Valley to join us here. So let's give them a big welcome. <laughs> so thank you guys for coming and also welcome to Vancouver. <laughs> so um, for today, we are excited. I actually, I cannot wait to start cooking with Chef in just a bit and also try the wine that Graham has picked out for us. But before we do so, I'd like to invite the organizer for today's event, Helen, to share a few words with us. So welcome, Helen. Hey. First of all, welcome everybody to join us here live uh, as well as on Zoom. Uh, we are really excited to have our first hybrid event uh, this time. And uh, of course, uh, Chef Alessio Valdez, all the way from Oliver, BC, as well as Graham McDonald, who's going to join us as well later on to talk about everything wine. So without further ado, uh, we're really excited to be here at the Trail Appliances Richmond showroom uh, with this beautiful kitchen. The backdrop is already very exciting. Mm -hmm. And so without further ado, let's invite a chef to walk us through the process. Yeah, Thank you so, so much. Yeah, so before we actually get started, I just mm -hmm. wanted to intro chef a little bit so everyone in the guest, mm -hmm. also our Zoom guest, will know a little more about chef. So uh, chef uh, Alisa has more than 16 years of experience in the culinary industry and has worked at uh, some of Toronto's best restaurants. And during COVID period, she decided to move from Toronto to Oliver. And from there, she started as the senior shoe chef, opening the restaurant in June of 2021. And now she's the executive chef at Phantom Creek Estates. I know Chef will be sharing with us two seasonal dishes, and she'll also be sharing with us some cooking tips and tricks, so be sure to look out for that. Today's event is generously sponsored by Trail Appliances. They are the leading independent appliance retailer in Western Canada with 12 locations in BC. 
They're committed to provide exceptional customer service and expert advice, along with excellent everyday pricing and the best selection in Western Canada. You can always count on them to help you find the right appliances that fits your space, lifestyle, and also budget as well. So now let's watch a short video to learn more about trail appliances. The trail. We're thinking it's time for a new washer and dryer. Do you want stackable or side by side? We're configured for both, thankfully. What do you prefer? Stacking will this new group. Absolutely, and I could have that built over the weekend. So then. That's stock delivery. Take the trail test drive and try out our live appliances in store. With over 50 brands to choose from, we have something for every budget and lifestyle. Trail appliances. Your home, your style. Welcome right, to Trail. So thank We're you thinking once it's again, Trail Appliance for sponsoring the event. Today's event is a very special one because as Helen has mentioned, for the very first time we are hosting a hybrid cooking event with four guests joining us today at the live kitchen in the Trail Appliance Richmond showroom. And we also have seven participants joining us on Zoom as well. And all our Zoom guests has received prepackaged ingredients carefully prepared by everythinggoesvirtual.com and generously sponsored by PYK Consultant. PYK Consultant is dedicated to help promote safe mask wearing in a fun and interactive way. And uh, in fact, the mask that I'm wearing right now is from them and they are high quality, fashionable and super comfortable to wear. So thank you again to PYK Consultant. All right, I know everyone is eager to get started get cooking um, but just one more note before we start is that our zoom guest you are currently muted and that is to ensure that we're all able to hear chef alisa clearly but if you have any questions you can always feel free to unmute yourself and ask chef directly uh, you should see a little uh, microphone button on the left bottom left hand of your uh, screen so just click that to unmute and ask chef directly alternatively you can also type in your questions uh, but we do encourage you to ask your question in case we miss one or two questions and same thing goes to our live guest if you have any questions throughout the way feel free to ask chef alisa directly and if you're watching us on facebook or youtube we have the uh, recipes online on our website so feel free to download that and follow along all right Chef, <laughs> I know I'm actually really excited to get started because you'll be teaching us two dishes. And the first one is the spot prawn crudo. Of course, with spot prawns in season, we have to take advantage of that. And the second dish is the spring risotto. So, shall we get started? Yes. Um, okay. So, I probably want to get the, um, the rice wine vinegar and the water to a boil. So it's 25 milliliters of rice wine and 25 milliliters of water. You can measure it without a measuring cup. <laughs> That's so amazing. <laughs> We'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like about cooking, like unlike baking, like you need all the ingredients and the exact measurement. But cooking, you can always play around with the different measurements. Yeah, that's why uh, I don't bake. <laughs> <laughs> I, only, uh, I only cook. Um, that's, baking is not my strong point. Mm. Um, okay, so while this is simmering, we're going to take out our spot prawns uh, from the fridge. So I've cleaned some ahead of time already. Um, I'm just gonna show you guys how to properly clean and devein spot prawns. Um, yeah. So I'm just gonna get some gloves. If you don't have gloves, that's okay. Okay, so. So get your spot prawns ready because Chef is gonna demonstrate how to remove the yeah. shell. So with mm -hmm. the spot prawns, um, obviously 
the head has a lot of flavor. So if you want to keep the shells for stalks, I highly recommend it. You just put it in your freezer once you're done. So I usually just like break the head off like that and then just peel away. So you have something like this. Very simple. Yeah. <laughs> and what about the thing inside? Yeah, so we're going to cut it in half. So mm -hmm. we're going to devein it. So from ah. the top to the bottom. Yeah. So we're going to take the heads off first, take mm -hmm. off the shells, and then devein after. Yeah, super easy. And I also see that our participants on Zoom, they are so busy <laughs> with the spot prawns. So just like that. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to put the shells on the side. OK, so. I'm just going to grab some water. Mm -hmm. So let me see how our participants are doing. Is everyone good with removing the shell off the prawn? If you are, give me a big thumbs up. If you're completed, if you have completed that step, awesome. I guess we're just waiting for one or two students to finish removing the shell. And then once you have done that, uh, we'll have to pay close attention because Chef will be uh, showing us how to devein it. Okay, so I usually lay it down like this um, from the back side. So you want it like that. And then we'll cut it here. So you go like that. So right on top in the Right middle. in the center. Mm -hmm. And these are these uh, spot prawns are really good because like most of them are super, super clean. But just in case there are veins, there's uh, it's always good to have a container of water. Just take it out and then dip your hand. And then that's pretty much it for cleaning. Mm, that's a very good tip. When yeah, it so it's not all over your, your hands. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. I know some people actually use a toothpick. Oh. Have you tried that? No. <laughs> I just do it the harder way. Mm. No, I feel like the toothpick way is actually a little harder. Is it? you have to like poke it and then hopefully you get that vein out. All right. So we're just deveining the last prawn. And let me see how our students are doing on Zoom. Are you guys all, all good? Awesome. <laughs> I see Lydia is all good. And then Timothy's all good too. Lynn's all good too. Awesome, awesome. And then, yep. OK, so I'm just going to wash my knife mm -hmm. really quick. So in the meantime, I believe one or two students are still in the process of removing the veins, uh, but that's perfectly fine because you still got time. <laughs> okay, so basically that was the hardest part of this dish. Um, next we'll pickle our Anaheim chilies. So, good? Yes. Okay, so I usually take the top, since this is big, um, I'm going to cut from here so it's nice and small, um, mm. so it's for also presentation. Um, so we're just going to cut like that and make sure your knife is really sharp. Oh, it should go this way. So just slicing it basically at yeah. the bottom of the pepper. So you want it like that. And how much of that would you need? So for this one, I'm going to do, so basically it's eight spot prawns per dish. Mm -hmm. So we want eight pieces per, or eight pieces oh. in total. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. so each person will have a bite of each, uh, each ingredient, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm going to do a little more since I'm doing for four people. 
And then now that it's getting bigger for me, um, we'll just do a little less because these are mm. a little spicy. Is the spiciness from the seed or from the pepper itself? It's from the seed, yeah. Mm. Luckily, this one <laughs> doesn't have any seeds yet. And this will... Okay, um, I have yes. a question. Yes, go Can ahead. Can I um, show me the de de-veining one more time? Uh, we were a little bit slow with the feeling. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All good. <laughs> we're just going to demonstrate the de-veining again. Okay. Um, so you have your shrimp on your cutting board? Yes, yeah. Okay, so basically the whole shrimp and then just lay them down flat like that. Yes, yeah. And then you're just gonna cut right down the center. And then if you don't see any veins, it's totally fine. That means the shrimp is clean. And if you do, you can just take them off. Oh, okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, that was a very good question. So if you have any questions, feel free to unmute yourself and ask Jeff directly because we would love to interact with every single one of you. So don't be shy and ask your questions. Same with our four live guests. If you have any questions throughout the week, feel free to ask Chef directly as well. All right, okay. back to our pepper. So almost done here. Mm -hmm. Just gonna cut a couple more slices. So I'm just gonna use that much. So we're gonna put it in a small bowl. So I'm gonna use a deli. So I guess for our participants on Zoom, cutting eight pieces would be enough because there's yeah. eight shrimps. Yeah, yeah in exactly. The dish. Mm -hmm. all right, just checking on our guests to see if everyone's all good with the pepper. If you are, give me a big thumbs up so we know that we can move along. Okay, awesome, awesome. Good. All right, what is okay. our next step? So we're gonna pour the rice wine pickling liquid over the peppers. Um, we're gonna hot pickle it, so we don't need to ice bath it. Mm. So directly put the vinegar. Yeah, so your vinegar and your water over the peppers. Just like that. And then we're just gonna mix it. And then you're just gonna let this sit at room temp until we have to plate. Just like that. All right, so once again, the chef just poured the mixture of the vinegar mixture directly into the pepper. And we're just gonna leave that aside until we are plating. Okay, so next we're going to segment uh, lemon. So for the lemon, we're gonna take the top and the bottoms off. Just like this. I think they're just grabbing their lemons. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna put this away. Yeah. yeah, so with the lemon, we're just gonna cut the top and the bottom off. And then if, I think everyone's all ready with the lemon. Yeah? yeah, okay. So this one, I'm gonna show you how to do it slowly. This is a little tricky. Um, so we're basically gonna cut the pith off. So you're gonna take your knife, and I usually like to start from the bottom, and then I, yeah, work your way to the top, go like that, like make a curve. So follow the lemon, just like that. And then we're gonna do that all the way around. So basically just kind of like cutting off the skin. Exactly. And then following the curve of the lemon. And then if you have to clean it up a little bit, go ahead. Just 
just like that. All right, so chef just basically removed the skin of the, uh, the lemon by cutting it off and then just following the curve of the lemon. And let me just see how our Zoom participants are doing. Do you guys have any questions on this step? Because it, it may look difficult actually, especially when you're not really good with, yeah. with cutting. <laughs> so yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to ask Chef. And if you need us to demo one more time, uh, we can also ask Chef to demonstrate it again. We just want to make sure that everyone's all on track with basically removing the skin of the lemon. Is everybody all good with that? Awesome, Timothy's good. And Lydia, are you good with the lemon? Awesome. And Vivian? Awesome, okay. And Len is all good too, right? Awesome, looks good. Okay, so awesome, awesome. I'm seeing all the lemons, which is great. So should we move on, Chef? Yes, so now we're gonna segment it. So you're gonna take it and carefully just cut off the segments, just like that. And then we'll pick the seeds out after, just like that. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to demonstrate it one more time just in yeah. case they didn't catch that. So. There you go. So right now we are segmenting the lemon. So basically cutting the lemon meat. So uh, how much, how many of the lemon do we need to cut? Or do we just segment the entire lemon? Uh, you can do the entire lemon because mm -hmm. we're going to use the core uh, to squeeze over the shrimp. Mm. Yeah. So this one, since I'm making four plates, I'm going to do one more lemon. I'm going to save this guy. So right now, Chef is just demonstrating one more time how to remove the skin. So you basically cut the skin off and following the curve again of the lemon. And once you have removed the skin, you can start segmenting the lemon. And I see that chef is really precise in terms of removing basically the white stuff, <laughs> making sure it looks perfect. How many people just cut themselves like that? Oh, <laughs> I hope nobody. <laughs> it really helps to have a really sharp knife to do this. Mm -hmm. So Chef right now is demonstrating again how to segment the lemon. And then once we have removed basically the flesh, uh, the meat of it, uh, we're gonna save the, the core. Yes. The middle part. We're going to use that to squeeze over. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to take each segment and then we're going to cut it in half. So right now, taking your lemon meat, uh, cut it in half. And then take this seeds out. And then make sure to remove the seeds because you wouldn't want to eat the seeds. <laughs> I see that everyone's all busy with the cutting, which is good. Almost there. One more step and then we're ready to plate.
All right, so we have finished cutting the lemon. So how's everybody doing with the lemon meat? Is everyone all done with the cutting part? Awesome, Lydia's good. Timothy, you're good? Great. Len, you're all good too? Awesome. Vivian, good? Great. Okay, I see the other thumbs up, so great. So I believe everyone's all done with cutting the lemon. Okay, so next, of our final step for this uh, dish, before we plate, we're going to cut the fennel. Mm. So the fennel is going to add a little bit of freshness to the dish. Um, so take your fennel bulb, and then we're going to cut it in half, just like that. So we use the bottom part, is it because it's more flavorful? Oh, the core, because we're mm. going to cut it. If you don't cut it, this is like, it, it won't taste good. Oh. You, we just want this part. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, theirs is already yeah. cut. <laughs> I guess they just have to cut the top part off. Yeah. Part. <laughs> yeah, and then we'll core the fettle. Mm -hmm. All right. So let me know once you guys are ready with the funnel. Awesome. I see Vivian's ready with it. Lydia's all good too. And then, Timothy, I'm assuming you're, you're good to go. Awesome. And I guess Lynn went to get the funnel. I guess well, finish product again. I want to see what it looks like. Oh. What it's supposed to look like. Okay, yeah. Thank you. I guess while we're waiting, we can chit chat a little bit with Chef. So I know that um, you're really passionate about cooking. Can you share with us your journey? Yeah, so um, basically my mother inspired me uh, mm. to go into the culinary arts. Uh, I was born in the Philippines and then uh, being Filipino in the culture, we always threw large parties and my mom would wake up super, super early and just like <laughs> cook all day, slave away in the kitchen, making beautiful food. And I remember just like watching her over the counter mm -hmm. um, and then helping her with dishes. And then she taught me how to use a knife. And then uh, after high school, I was like, oh, I don't know what to do. And then I decided to go uh, do a co-op program mm -hmm. and do culinary arts. And I just fell in love with it. So after high school, I just started working in kitchens, and then that's basically it, just like work, work, work. Wow. Yeah, I didn't I go to cooking school at all. I guess that's where you got your awesome knife skills from, your mother. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of uh, cutting the finger, for mm -hmm. sure, over the past couple of years, but yeah, you get used to it. All right, so let me just check on our students to see if everyone is ready to go. I think they are. So Fred, you're good to go, right? Awesome. All right, so let's move on then, Chef. Okay, so next we're gonna take the core out of the fennel. So basically, we're going to take this guy out, the triangle part of it. And so we basically just cut the triangle part out. Yeah, like that. That was easy. Yeah, also when you're also when you're cutting it, the fennel separates because this keeps it together mm. as well. Yeah. All right. All right. So after we remove basically the core. Yeah, so basically when you remove the core, you're gonna cut the fennel in half and then we're gonna slice it as thin as possible. If you have a mandolin, go ahead and use it. Um, but yeah, we can slice this for really, really thin, so in half like that. And then if it makes it easier for you guys, you can separate them too. And then just cut really, really thin. Mm, so basically long, thin pieces yeah. is what you're looking for. Just like that. Mm, I 
see that your when you're cutting, your finger is actually a little curved. That's to protect the tip of your fingers. Right? Yeah, so your knuckles. Uh, yeah, so you're not mm -hmm. cutting your tip of your finger. It's like a guide, basically. <laughs> a way to avoid cutting yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So chef is just demonstrating one more time how you slice the funnel. Again, it is into a long, thin, long, thin pieces. Is that is that is what you're looking for? Yeah. So half of a funnel is basically all you need, like a quarter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then that's basically it. How's everybody with the slicing? Make sure you're, you be careful and not to cut yourself. Okay, so Lydia's all good. And then everyone else, I'm assuming they're still cutting, which is okay. So basically, after cutting the funnel, our next step is plating, right? Yeah, my favorite mm -hmm. part. <laughs> okay. Plating is actually my favorite part, because you get to play with your creativity, basically. Exactly. And we also do have a friendly competition online for the best looking dish. So be sure to use your creativity in terms of plating, and then post your photos online to compete with other participants. All right, so let me just check on our students. So once everyone's all good to go, we're gonna go ahead and do the plating. So if you're ready to go, give me a big thumbs up. Awesome. We're just waiting for a couple more. Awesome, lens is looking great. Okay. Awesome, okay, I think Everyone's all good to go. T Timothy, are you guys good? Or you still need a couple more minutes? Okay, awesome. We're all good. So let's start the plating, chef. So you should also grab your cilantro that you got and the edible flowers that you got. So for plating, we basically have a couple ingredients. Obviously, the star is the spot prawns, which we have prepared already. And then there's also the lemon, and then the pepper um, in the vinegar, and then the edible flour and the cilantro. So once you have grabbed all these ingredients, then we're gonna start plating. Chef is a very neat and organized person, <laughs> eating everything on one side. I am. <laughs> I All right, am. so which uh, ingredients should we start plating first? Um, we should start plating the spot prawns first. So you're mm. going to lay out eight. I will show you one. I brought my tweezers. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we're just going to use a, if you guys have a round plate, um, the way, the, my style of plating is I like to see everything on the plate, not just like in the center. Mm -hmm. I wanna see all the ingredients on the plate. So I'm gonna do eight pieces per plate. So one. So first we are plating the shrimp on the plate. 
Didn't you uh, forget to cook them? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a crudo. <laughs> Okay, so eight pieces per plate, just like that. And then I'm gonna finish the rest of the three plates. Mm -hmm. So Chef is gonna demonstrate again how she plates with the shrimp. So again, Chef uh, likes to spread basically the ingredients all throughout the plate instead of just focusing it on the center. So that's why she's placing the shrimp like this. In case you guys couldn't catch it, I guess we can have a little, little close up on what it looks like. So this is basically how Chef plated the spot prawns, just like that. But again, you don't have to follow exactly what yeah. Chef did because um, you can use your creativity in terms of plating and that's really the fun part. You want to pass me that plate? Thank you so much. And then we're just plating our last dish for, for the shrimp. There's still a lot more to plate. <laughs> Awesome. I'm just going to wash my hands. Okay, so we have four dishes with the spot prawns all plated. And then we're just going to wait for Chef a little bit as she wash her hands. And then we're going to continue with the plating. So let me just see how everyone's doing. If you guys don't mind, show your plate to us just, to, just so we can see. Have a sneak peek of your plating. Looks nice. Vivian's looks really nice. And I see you have the cilantro on it already. <laughs> Okay, ooh, Timothy's great, looking great. And Lydia's good. Okay. Ooh, looking nice there. Okay, so if we're all good to go, then we're gonna continue with the rest of the plating right now. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the pickled Anaheim chilies. I'm just gonna take them out of the pickling liquid and then set them on a tray with a napkin so you're not getting any uh, uh, pickling liquid on the plate. So you want all your ingredients nice and dry. And then we'll do that with the lemon segments as well. So right now, uh, grab a piece of uh, paper towel because we are soaking the excess liquid from the uh, pickled pepper and then also from the lemon as well. Because Chef said we want the ingredients to be dry, basically. Yeah. Um, and then you can pick whatever flour you want to use. I like to use the orange because it, uh, it makes the plate pop out. like that and then your cilantro next and then for the cilantro you can always use the stem the stem has a lot of flavor okay and then the fennel is less so we're basically ready to start plating um, I usually start with the pickled Anaheim's chilies first. So you guys have eight pieces, so put one piece on uh, a shrimp. So these guys are a lot bigger, so I'm gonna do 
probably four per plate. So right now we're just placing the pickled uh, pepper on our shrimp. And because our, the pieces of the pepper for us, it's quite big. So that's why chef is only putting uh, about four to five pieces per plate. But um, because for you guys, um, the pieces that you guys cut should be relatively smaller than the ones that we have. So chef recommended putting one piece on each shrimp. Yeah, and then next is the lemon segments. I'm going to do about six pieces per plate. And then again, anywhere on the plate, I guess as Chef is plating the other ones, I can show a close-up of what Chef has done so far. So this is basically what it looks like after plating the, um, the pepper and then also the lemon. So you'll see that the pepper is on top of the shrimp. And again, for you guys, you can, you can put one piece on top of every shrimp but because the size of ours is relatively bigger and uh, we don't want to put too much because they are quite spicy all right okay all right so once you guys have done with plating the lemon should we go with the cilantro or the flour first? Uh, so these are the last ones. Mm. So we're going to squeeze the lemon um, over it. The ones that we saved, the lemon core that we saved, we're going to squeeze it over and then we're going to put olive oil and then season with your Malden salt or kosher salt. So we just try to get a little bit on every shrimp. So right now, Chef is just using the core of the lemon that we cut out earlier and squeezing the juice on top of each shrimp. Just like that. And then olive oil next up. Oh. So depending on how much you love olive oil, you can put as much as you want. And I try to uh, drizzle on every piece of shrimp. So after the olive oil, I believe it's the salt, right? Yeah, we're going to season. Mm -hmm. I like to season on top of the shrimp. Just basically a small pinch on yeah. each. Mm -hmm. All right, so now that we're done with seasoning with the salt. Now we're gonna garnish with the cilantro and the edible flowers. Mm. So I'm gonna start with the cilantro first. Just gonna pick the leaves off.
Chef, you mentioned earlier that the stem has more flavor. So if we want to use the stem, would that yeah, be? Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Just like that, like five, six pieces, depending on how much you love cilantro. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Do you guys like it? You guys are all good with cilantro, right? Yeah. Oh, one no cilantro. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Oh. <laughs> you scared me for a second. I was like, really? <laughs> okay, so we're going to just show a close-up of one of the demonstration with the cilantro. So this is basically what it looks like right now. Can't tilt it too much. Okay. So you'll see that basically the garnish and the ingredients are kind of spread out. So I'm just going to put this down right now. And let me see how our students are doing so far. Lydia, are you all good with the plating? Oh, I think your screen froze for Lydia. Oh, I see you again. <laughs> oh, awesome. And Fred, are you all good with the plating as well? Looking very nice. Chef, do you want to look at Fred's? Oh, looks better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then Nisha is good. Awesome. And Vivian, what about yours? Are you all good? It looks very colorful. Loving that. And then Lynn, good? Oh, it looks nice. It looks like a painting, actually. What about Timothy? Are you guys all good with the plating? So, so? Okay, no worries. We still have the edible flowers to place on. And then Cassandra, I see you're really busy right now. You're good with the plating? Good, awesome, okay. Okay, so final step is to add our flowers. Mm -hmm. Um, and then again, as much as you want, I'm going to do eight since there's eight prawns. See how it just gives it a like nice pop to it. Yeah, it's really vibrant. Yeah, especially color. like using a black plate. Mm -hmm. I love using black plates because like, yeah, I love color on a plate. The contrast, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. That. But is it okay we mix different colors of, course, of the yeah. flower to make yeah. it even more vibrant? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So this is the time that you can actually play with your creativity. It looks very nice. Okay, I'm just going to show a close up of what it looks like after we added in the edible flower. You'll see that the orange really adds a pop to the dish makes it very vibrant. All right. So I'm just going to put this down for now. All right. Let me see how everyone else is doing. They're all busy plating. What about our guest? Do you guys have any questions so far with the dish? No? Okay. Are you guys looking forward to trying yes. it? I am definitely like, I'm actually drooling right now as I'm watching Chef making these dishes. What I like the most is um, the color. It makes it really vibrant, so you just really want to, it's like a painting, I would say. Definitely makes me want to dig in. <laughs> All right. Looking very nice. And Okay, we have a question from Fred. I missed the funnel part. Ah, adding the funnel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess I missed the funnel part too. All good. Thank you for the reminder, Fred. <laughs> okay, so for the fennel, we're actually going to um, toss it in a little bit of olive oil and then again, place it nicely on the plate. So I was like, oh, it's missing something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
So right now, um, Chef just added some olive oil into our funnel slices. We're not going to season it, it because mm. we already seasoned the shrimp as well. Mm. And then, yeah, just like gently place some slices. And then, yeah, it adds more color to it. Like that. Looks very nice already. Okay, we're just gonna show a close up of what it looks like. All right, so this is what it looks like after adding in the funnel. Okay. All right, so I guess as um, Chef is still plating, we can invite Graham over to share with us uh, the wine that he has picked for this dish and the reason behind picking this wine. So welcome, Graham. Thank you. Thank you <laughs> Do you want to stand in the middle? Yeah, perfect. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, it's such a beautiful kitchen. These appliances it are is. stunning. Um, speaking of stunning, this dish has really taken form, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's always a pleasure to work alongside Chef and pair wines with her dishes because they're so nuanced and complex. Um, so as that may be, this is why I chose this wine. This is our 2019 Riesling. Mm. Um, now, in terms of wine pairing, it's really important uh, to find and achieve balance. You, want, you don't want the wine to fall away to the background uh, to any dish. You want it to amplify and accentuate and complement the flavors. Mm -hmm. uh, so when it comes to pairing with seafood, like we have here with these beautiful spot prawns, um, it's quite a powerful flavor. You know, so you want to find a wine that can really cleanse the palate after each bite, mm. right? And really um, complement the minerality components that you find in pretty much all seafood, but especially with, um, you know, shellfish like this, right? So our uh, Riesling, our 2019 Riesling, which I have right here, I'm just going to place that there. Uh, so this wine is, uh, it's a very dry wine. It's uh, done in an Alsatian style. Uh, so it's got long press cycles, long ferments. Uh, there's very low residual sugar. So it's very bright, very fresh, very crisp, you know? Mm. And so this uh, goes really well with, uh, with shellfish and seafood dis dishes because it really balances out that strong flavor uh, that's coming from the shellfish. Uh, but also it's got these subtle components to it, like these uh, dry desert uh, sage spices and also subtle sweet spices, but it does have this core of citrus fruit, which really will benefit a dish like this, which at its core has this beautiful citrus fruit. Um, and it, it also has this beautiful uh, aroma, this beautiful nose of, of floral aromatics, which, mm -hmm. you know, does kind of complement the, 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 flowers. the edible flowers <laughs> on the dish as well. Um, so yeah, this is a perfect uh, wine to pair with a dish such, like, such as this. It's very elegant, it's mm -hmm. very bright, very, very crisp, very refreshing. Awesome. Thank you so much, Graham, for telling us the reason why you picked this wine. And honestly, I think after the class is over, I can't wait to try this pairing myself too. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we'll be forward to that. Yeah. All right. So right. should we pass the dish over to our guests? Yeah. And let us know what you think in terms of the pairing. And also, if you guys have um, the dish and also the wine ready as well, you can, I guess, try a sip of the wine and then eat it with the, um, with the dish, with the spot prawns. But don't eat it all because we want to take a group photo later. So save some pieces so that we can take a big group photo in just a bit. But do let us know what you think about the combination with the wine that Graham has picked for us and also the spot prawns as well. And in the meantime, I guess if you guys have any questions related to um, the dish that we just made or if you have any questions when it comes to wine, we can also ask Graham, our wine expert. Yeah, I actually do have a question yeah. related to wine because when it comes to wine, I'm such a noob. Like I know nothing about wine. So that's what, okay. What would you recommend for maybe like beginners to to try? Like in terms of which wine should they pick? Something okay. Well, definitely something that's very very light light bodied for mm. sure. You know, because uh, wine the more complex wine gets, the more layers of flavor there are, right? And mm -hmm. if your palate isn't used to 
consuming wine of that magnitude or opulence, you can kind of get lost and a little bit overwhelmed, right? Mm -hmm. So I'd recommend going for whites. You know, I would go for something simple like a classic Chardonnay. You know, a steel, a steel fermented Chardonnay that's going to mm -hmm. be very crisp and you know one or two dimensional. And for reds, you can't go wrong with a Pinot Noir, cold climate Pinot Noir. You know, it's mm -hmm. very light bodied, very very easy to to understand, right? Yeah. Learned a lot. I guess these are the two wines that I will. Be trying later. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, is everybody? I guess everyone's all done with their dish. Give me a big thumbs up if you guys are done. I guess you can. You guys can also show me your creations, and then we can take a look at it. All right. Let's take a look at Lydia's. Looks very nice. It looks like a garden, to be honest. Looks very nice. Okay, what about Vivian? Vivian, can we see your dish? Nice! You, you actually kept the flower in its shape, which is great. Okay, what about Fred? Can we take a look at your dish? Wow, that plate, oh my god, looks so pretty. Awesome, good job, Fred. What about Cassandra? Mmm, looks very nice, like a garden as well. What about Timothy? How? <laughs> Show us your dish. Don't be shy. Well, it looks oh, nice. Wow. With the flower in the middle. Beautiful looking. Yep. Graham approved it. <laughs> <laughs> what about Lynn? Can we see your dish? Oh, it looks nice. Awesome. Good job, everybody. Wow, they're all so talented. They are. They're really creative, I, I'd have to say. And be sure to post your photo online because we have a friendly competition online for the best looking dish. So snap that photo and then post it online later. All right, so as we are just prepping for our second dish, so the second dish that we are making is the spring risotto. So uh, right now, Chef is just preparing for the second dish. And I guess at this time, if you have any questions, whether it's about wine or whether it's about the dish that you just made, feel free to shoot your question. And you can also unmute yourself and ask Chef or ask Graham directly um, instead of typing in the chat if you want. All right, so chef, for our next dish, what should we start prepping? Yeah, a yes, of course. Why do you use the protein swap pot? We should not use the fresh one. This is a fresh or protein. Um, so for those ones, you can either use fresh or frozen. Okay. Um, these ones were frozen just because of transport issues. Oh, um, but obviously, fresher is better, but you can definitely use frozen spot prawns if you want. Yeah. Um, so frozen spot prawns are available all year round. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I can fill in a little bit. Uh, actually, those are live fresh prawns, but we just freeze it as soon as they arrive. Okay. So they are as good as fresh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very good question. <laughs> All right, so should we prep for the next dish? Yeah, so this one has a lot more uh, prep going into it. Mm -hmm. um, so if you guys have a small um, a small pot, you might want to start uh, simmering your veg stock for the risotto and then grab another small pot for blanching the fiddleheads and the asparagus. Right, I'm just going to so add more water to my pot. Right. So grab your pots and then we're going to get started. Okay. So right now Chef has actually uh, two pots on the stove, one medium size and then one smaller size. I'm just going to move this one here. I have a quick question for the yeah. chef while yes. prepping here. Mm -hmm. what, what pots do you like to cook with? Are you a, a stob, a, um all cloud? Is there something preferable that you're um, honestly, I, I don't have a preference, whatever is good to use. <laughs> I'm not really picky, to be honest. Okay. All right. So we're just bringing the water uh, to a boil. And then in the meantime, do we have to prepare any ingredients? Yeah, so we're gonna clean the fiddleheads. 
Um, so fiddleheads are the top of the fern, like the plant. Um, so we basically want to take the bottoms off and just snap it. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Just like that. Can we demonstrate it one more time yeah. in case they missed it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was really quick. Just snap it off. Mm. That's it. So how many of that should we prepare? Um, honestly, whatever they have there, they can all use. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to use this all up since I'm cooking for four. And are we just going to be using, I guess, the middle part or we're we using the whole thing? Oh, we're using the whole thing. Mm. Yeah. But right and now we're just separating. Yeah, we're just cleaning the bottoms. Mm -hmm. And then that's it. All right. So once that step is done, uh, I guess give me a big thumbs up once you guys are all good with removing the tail part. Awesome, Cassandra's all good, Lydia's all good. Timothy, you guys are good? Are still working on it? Good, okay, awesome, good, good, good. And Vivian, you guys, okay. Uh, Nisha's good, Vivian's good. Uh, Lynn and Fred, are you guys good to go? <laughs> awesome. And then Lynn, I think she is just prepping. I see her in front of the stove. <laughs> I guess she's uh, boiling her water right now. All right. Oh, Lynn is all good to go. Okay, chef, what is our next step? Okay. So the next step, we're going to take the asparagus and just break off the bottoms. You don't have to put a lot of pressure and it just like breaks naturally. And that's when you know, because this is very uh, hard to eat. So it's like very fibrous. So you actually want these guys. Mm. And then if you want, you can save the asparagus stems for stock as well, if you're making stock. How much of the asparagus, I guess, use however many they have received, Yeah, right? mm -hmm. exactly. So, I think, this is good for four people. <laughs> Awesome. Um, okay, so we're going to peel um, asparagus. So we're going to use shaved parm. So we're going to peel parm and then we're going to peel asparagus for garnish. So we're going to peel the asparagus first and then whatever leftover you have, you'll mix it in the risotto. Oh, I never know you need to peel asparagus. Oh, this I usually is, eat it as a whole. Yeah, this one I'm just using for garnish ah, um, and then gotcha. whatever leftover I have. Mm -hmm. So we're just taking your peeler and then you're just peeling it like this. So basically creating really thin slices of the... Yeah, so basically asparagus. when you're plating it, you're kind of creating like a little nest on top. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah, and then these guys we're going to save, we're going to cut it. So basically using a peeler, you peel from the top mm -hmm. all the way to the bottom part. And then for the middle part, we're saving it for later use. Yeah. Okay. And then I also see here the water is boiling on, on this side. Okay. So when the water is boiling, make sure we are salting the water. Um, so this one I put like two liters of water and then I put like a tablespoon of salt. And then we're going to blanch the fiddleheads. Um, so in the meantime, we're going to grab a bowl with some ice. So once the fiddleheads are done cooking, we're going to shock them in ice so they stop cooking. So they still have that like beautiful green color to them. Mm.
So right now we're just grabbing ice for uh, chilling the uh, fennel head after we boil it for a little bit. So fennel heads, if you do not boil them for a certain amount of time, um, they will give you stomach problems because they are poisonous. Oh. Um, so a good don't don't be scared. Don't be scared. A good <laughs> so a good uh, a good reference of cooking time is between 12 to 15 minutes. So since these guys are a little bigger, we're gonna go 13 minutes for them. So we do have this at the restaurant. Um, I haven't made anybody sick yet. Don't worry. This is the same exact dish we have on our menu at the restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, go ahead and drop your fiddleheads, and then we'll set a 13 minute timer. So once your water is boiling first. So this is very important guys. So you need to boil your funnel head for about uh, 12 to 15 minutes. So that for the size that we have right now, Chef says she's gonna boil it for about 13 minutes. So we need to set a timer on the side and it's really important that you boil it for enough time or else you might get a stomach problem. So watch out for that. Make sure you boil it for that amount of time. Yeah, so once that's boiling, we're gonna add some water to this and then we'll continue with the rest of the prep. Mm -hmm. Do we boil, do we boil um, the stems and the middle or just one? It's just the middle part. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the stems you can discard. Okay, so we'll continue peeling our asparagus at the meantime, while that's going. When it's boiling, does it have a, a flavor to it? Uh, no, so far, really. I can't really smell no. it. <laughs> He's smelling <laughs> boiling vegetables. So what's the purpose of adding the funnel head to the dish? Um, it's, it's very, it tastes very nutty. So this, um, oh. this dish is basically inspired by spring, so obviously, once fiddleheads are coming in, once asparagus is coming in, that's a sign that spring is here. Mm. Um, and they do all work well together in terms of flavor. Nice, so this is like a spring dish, basically. Yeah, it is a spring dish. You can add like fava beans, very spring, or some sweet peas as well. Mm -hmm. So as chef is prepping the asparagus, let me check on our participants on Zoom and see how everybody's doing. I see Vivian's probably boiling the funnel head right now. And then what about the rest of you? I guess still on the asparagus, right? Oh, Fred has the bunch of asparagus. Awesome. And Nisha's just gave us a thumbs up. Awesome. All right. And I guess while we're prepping for the asparagus, I can chit chat with Chef a little bit more because I know you're from the big city, Toronto. So what does it feel like to move from a big city to Okanagan? Um, honestly, it's, so I, I left Toronto because of uh, COVID, like mm -hmm. a lot of the restaurants were shutting down and then reopening and then uh, doing takeout service only. Mm. Um, so yeah, my, my friend had a post on her Instagram and all of a sudden I was just like, I just want to move out west. Just like out of, out of nowhere. Out of nowhere, okay. Yeah, <laughs> and then a month later I was here. So I moved here in February. Um, but so far it's been pretty good. Like it's, it's a lot quieter for sure mm -hmm. uh, down here. And I noticed the people are a lot nicer. <laughs> <laughs> and the restaurant industry is, is totally different because I find that in Toronto, the restaurant industry there is very competitive and here oh. it's just like everyone's a family. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but I'm still adjusting. It's hard, like a lot of the stores in the Okanagan close really early, mm -hmm. like five o'clock. So <laughs> yeah. Have you joined um, the Okanagan Chefs Society or are you doing some things with them? They seem like a really fun group. I have not. I need to, um, I need to network. I've heard a lot yeah, of good the, things about them. Yeah, there's the one chef that has that orchard cooking mm -hmm. school. He's always a good contact. He's an Oliver as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I, I think it'd be cool. And, um, 
I'm just going to give a quick shout out to another group that you might think of. Okay. Um, which is a chef's organization, as women in culinary, and we're always looking for valuable members. And, um, oh. So we have a great That's awesome. I'll message you about that race. And I let them know guys any more time. Yes, please. And I also see Fred has another recommendation, which is the Chef's Table Society of BC, a great organization. Thank you so much for the recommendation. Thank you. Oh, I actually see the, the boiling water. Like, I'm starting to see some impurities coming out. Yeah. Is that like the dirt? Oh. No, no, oh. no. It's, it's just the, the color of it. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so once I've peeled the asparagus, um, a good trick, so it's now they're like nice and flimsy, so we want to put ice water um, to it so they like stiffen up a little more because we're basically using the peeled asparagus for garnish around the plate like you're making a nest around the risotto. So I'm just going to take a bit of the ice for here. Yeah, and then we're just gonna put some water in the asparagus, uh, the shaved asparagus with the ice, cold water. Mm. <laughs> so once you have uh, sliced, basically sliced your asparagus, put some mm. ice on it, and then also put some cold water into it as well. And we're gonna leave it on the side. Yeah, so that's done. And then, so the rest of the asparagus that we have left over, we're just gonna cut them um, fine, like a small dice, basically. And then this, we're gonna use it to fold in the risotto. So you want it this small. Just like that. So dicing right now the, the core of the asparagus, the leftover asparagus into small pieces. Yeah, and again, we're not wasting anything, mm -hmm. which is good. And I'll be showing you guys a close-up of how the size of the asparagus in just a bit, so you guys know approximately how big it should be. This is the chopped up asparagus, so the size, so you guys can take a look at that for a reference. All right, so once we have chopped up the asparagus, then what should we prepare next? Um, and then we're going to pick the oyster mushrooms next. So when you get them, you're, they're probably in a cluster like this and you're just picking it down basically into a smaller size, just like this. Mm -hmm. So would you say like just your preferred size? Exactly. However yeah. big you want it to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just keep in mind that when you do cook mushrooms, they do shrink a lot. So not too small when you're picking it down. Ah, yeah. That's a good tip. Just like that. Are there certain parts with the mushroom, um, like this sort of woody part that you would advise not to use as opposed to the top? What do you yeah, think if you have a woody part like this part right here that I just found, you can just uh, break it off and you can discard it or you can save it for stock as well. Awesome.
So with, with the mushroom, we basically set it aside after yeah. we finish breaking it into pieces, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to just set it on the side like that. And then next, we're just gonna cut our shallots and our garlic. Mm, I love garlic, chef. Do you? I absolutely love it. I was gonna clean this up a little bit. But it's a pain to actually peel the garlic. Yeah. In, in my opinion. Um, okay, so we're actually gonna just shave the Parmesan cheese first. So you guys have got a block of cheese. So you basically want to use your cheese grater and then just grate it like this. And then we're gonna save a little bit because we're also gonna peel it. So would you say save half of it for peeling later? So Yes. Okay, shred half of it and then save the other half for peeling. Yeah. So peeling just really thin slices of the cheese. And approximately how, how um, many? Honestly, as much, if you love cheese, then mm -hmm. you can peel all of it. Um, and again, this is just for garnish with our shade risotto. So I think for four people, this is enough. So about like three to five full pieces would probably be, be good. For one dish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that's fine. Okay. And Chef, I was just wondering, how long does it usually make, uh, take to, to make this dish? Um, so in the restaurant, everything is already prepped. Mm. Um, and then we have a risotto because it's such a popular dish. It would take about like five minutes to make because we do pre-cook the risotto. Oh, um, okay. Generally, risotto takes about 10 to 12 minutes to cook. Mm, um, okay. Yeah. Okay. So should we get that cooking or finish prepping first? Uh, we're going to prep because we need the garlic and the shallots and mm. then we're almost good to go. Okay. All right, so right now we're just prepping the garlic. Oh, you just basically take a clove and then just press it down with the knife and... Yeah. It feels, oh, it's so simple. I usually like literally just peel it one by Peel it whole? <laughs> yeah, I go the hard way. So I guess that's another tip for beginners. Yeah, exactly. So take the bottoms off and then you just get to mince the garlic really fine. So for one dish, would you say one clove is enough? Yeah. Or, mm -hmm. So I'm going to do two here since okay. there's four people. Mm -hmm. Just like that is fine. And then we're going to brunoise the shallots. So I'm just going to check the timer on the fiddleheads. Okay. So we have 20 seconds. Ah. When the timer goes up, do you wanna? Yes, of yeah. course. I can finally help you. I've been waiting for this time. <laughs> oh. So once you finish cooking the fennel heads, put it into your ice water immediately to cool it off, right, Chef? Yep, exactly. Okay. So That's next we're done. going to brunoise a shallot. So basically you can use one shallot um, for this dish. So just like this. Okay, 
So in terms, so after we have finished prepping all these ingredients, then we start cooking our yep. risotto, right? Yeah. Okay. Should we start that? Yep. Okay, awesome. So what are the ingredients that we need for cooking the risotto? So you'll need your shallots and then mm -hmm. your garlic, and then you're going to add your risotto rice and then some white wine. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that first. Graham, do you want to give me white wine? The white wine. <laughs> It is. Yeah. Okay. So what do we talk about the charity that we are working on? Yes, today? so um, so today's event, the net proceeds will be donated to Richmond Care Richmond Gives. So they are an organization that has been serving the local community for 50 years. And they have worked really hard every day to ensure that the charitable sector has the resources it needs to make a meaningful impact in our community so we do encourage everyone to donate for this good cause because i believe together we can actually help those that are in need so your donations will be greatly appreciated so wow since today is a hybrid cooking session we have some uh, very uh yeah we have yes. friends here mm -hmm. so maybe oh tim what do you think you Bobby. actually finished the dish. What do you think about the pairing? Fantastic. Fantastic? <laughs> well, I asked the fish, the frozen or fresh, mm. the temperature is very good. The frozen it might be too cold. Ah. So it's, like, it's very good. Mm -hmm. Well, awesome. Chef did uh, put them over like cold running water this morning to make sure they defrost. Yeah. yeah. So how long to just uh, from the freeze, uh, freezer to take out, you just could uh, get the temperature uh, Probably like out. five minutes. Yeah, just running it's under. Yeah, it doesn't take that long to defrost because it's so small. Oh, because mm. it's small. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. The supply was so nice to us that they separate, they got the bigger uh, live prawns and they freeze it immediately mm -hmm. so that um, we can keep it for a couple of days uh, because like they are, the prawns are all coming in every day so mm -hmm. they make sure that we have the best pick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what? The really fresh to start it is very good. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Awesome. What about the ladies? What do you guys Love think it. about Love the it. pairing? Very delicious. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So the wine. The wine. Mm. Thanks to Graham for the recommendation. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody was trying to go to Phantom Creek this summer. Mm. Um, so they have so fully built. I, I know um, Chef was working like overnight, like a big party. <laughs> last night and fly flew in this morning so we're really grateful for that <laughs> very tight schedule yeah and what about Doug? what did you think about the pairing um the wine's delicious i highly recommend that and i don't eat raw but i was just thinking could we uh fire up the frying pan and just, uh, <laughs> give these all hey doug that's a bit of a waste but that's okay <laughs> no, but it's, I, I did taste one I, yeah it was delicious. Mm -hmm. awesome probably yeah. better uh fried fruit Ah. Uh. <laughs> okay. Want to try it? Yeah. Oh, I, I love it. I, I love that dish. That's why I chose it. And also the color looks <laughs> really like. Yeah. Very springy. Very springy. Yeah. yeah. Very vibrant. Thank you. Um, shall we start? Yes. Okay. Everyone's good to go. Yep. Yeah, I see thumbs up. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna quickly cook the. So we're gonna cook the shallots and the garlic first. So sorry. I guess I can also help out too. I can be your little helper. Yeah, if, you if you wanna, if you wanna mix it. I know. We got the best view here. You gotta help out too. So yeah, you basically want to cook your shallots and garlic till they're translucent. And I would probably do it over medium heat. Mm -hmm. So how long does it usually take? About like one to two minutes. Okay. Why are you separating the two pack? Oh, because two for you guys, two for you guys, yeah. Oh, I see. <laughs> we can't cook everything in one pan. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to add our risotto. Mm -hmm. So we'll do half and half since it's four. I hope you Don't guys like risotto. In? Yeah, you can mix it. And then we're just gonna lightly toast the risotto until it's um, 
you can tell when it's like clear. So you're gonna lightly toast it for about one minute. Mm -hmm. So again, on medium heat, did you say? Exactly. Okay, on medium heat, once your shallots and garlic becomes translucent, then you can add in your risotto. Mm -hmm. It smells really good. And then you leave the risotto on for about one minute. Chef, the medium heat, what, about what, what, uh, what temperature? What, what medium, is, right? Yeah. Medium. medium. Yeah. yeah. What is the temperature there? Oh. So some people, they don't know what, what is That's a pop quiz. quiz. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would probably say like maybe th 300. <laughs> oh, 300. 300. Yeah. yeah. So now we're going to deglaze with your white wine. Um, we're using the Pinot Gris. Oh, Pinot Gris. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
uh, he's from Alsace, and our state wine director is actually Mark Berenger, mm. uh, formerly of uh, Berenger Estates in Napa and Decoy. Uh, so with those two leading our program, um, as, as well with our world-class state-of-the-art facility, um, we're, I think we're set up for success for the future. We want to leave, uh, write the next chapter in Canadian, uh, Canadian wine making and really set a new benchmark for the region, both mm -hmm. domestically and, and globally. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Bram, for sharing a lot with us That's about Phantom Creek Estate. And I mean, if I have a chance, I would definitely go visit you guys. <laughs> So how's the drive usually uh, from Vancouver to Ottawa? Well, you know, it's it's a beautiful drive. You know, it's uh, it's only a, it's only about four hours, um, and definitely taking that in the spring and summertime is mm -hmm. is definitely worthwhile. Um, we're like I said, we're located in Oliver. You know, so um, if you didn't want to drive, I'd recommend you fly into Penticton or Kelowna, um, and there are buses as well, or you can rent a car. But um, it's beautiful once you get into the Okanagan. You know, especially especially this time of year, mm -hmm. the seasons are changing. You know, everything's coming into bloom. Uh, the fruit is setting on the vines. Uh, it's an absolute uh, special place to be for sure. Yeah, we just have a comment coming in from Lynn and she says she's looking forward to lunch at Phantom Creek. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> you have a booking with us on, I see, is that the 19th? Yeah, perfect. Well, on June 18th. June 18th, perfect. <laughs> We're looking forward to hosting you. All right, so just checking in with Chef and see how we're doing here. So we're basically cooking the risotto on the side and then we're also stopping our mushrooms right now. Yeah, so once you have a nice golden brown color on your mushrooms, um, add a little bit of veg stock to it. So we're basically gonna monte in some butter. So the butter is uh, nice and thick and emulsified with the veg stock, also acting like a sauce. And then I'm guessing once the broth evaporates and you add a new scoop, inside mm -hmm. okay yeah well that's how to make a creamy risotto <laughs> which i've never done <laughs> yeah um so yeah so for your mushrooms we're gonna add the fiddleheads that we blanched earlier to cook it we're really busy multitasking so while the risotto is cooking on the side we're sauteing the mushroom and the fennel head and then I'm just going to give the risotto a quick taste. So what's the texture that we're looking for in this case? Um, you kind of still, you, so it's basically you want a al dente. Mm -hmm. So you want it to have a little bit of bite. Okay, yeah. awesome. And you mentioned before it takes about 15 minutes to finish cooking. 10, 10 minutes. 10 minutes. 10 to 12 minutes. <laughs> Good job. We have an expert over here. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so the mushrooms are going, the frill heads are going, and then these guys, the asparagus that we cut earlier, since they're so small, we're going to add them at the very end because they don't take that long to cook. Okay, gotcha. Okay, and then we'll season this at the very end as well. I'm not camera ready. So I'll turn this down to low. So Chef, how many risottos have you cooked in your life? Sorry? How many risottos have you cooked in your life? Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> a lot. You can do this in your sleep, eh? Yeah, basically. Is this also your favorite dish as well? Yes. Mm -hmm. mm. I can see why. It smells so good. Yeah, it's, it's really, really popular on the menu. Mm -hmm. And uh, our risotto does change quite often on the menu because we oh. use we use seasonal ingredients, right? Mm -hmm. So whatever's available, that's what we'll we'll use. Yeah, I remember Chef said because asparagus in the funnel head is basically like a spring ingredient. Exactly. So this is a spring dish. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So really, now, sorry, oh, go for it. Go for it. I'm gonna add in our uh, chopped asparagus. Okay. And the heat for that should be um, medium. Medium. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we'll get this going, and then our risotto should almost be there. It's basically past halfway. Mm -hmm. And then we'll give it another taste. It's really important to taste as you go, hey? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> Making sure that it's all Don't done. forget. Yeah. Yeah. And the flavoring and everything. Taste as you go, season as you go. 
Drink so I'll, exactly. Dri well, I don't. I don't Cook have with a wine. Drink. Sometimes put it in the food. You know. I don't have a drink. <laughs> yes, More wine um, is so always good. Yes, we do put the fiddlehead in What's the mushroom, your, uh, and we actually add that near the end. I really like our, uh, our new again, 2021 that rosé at Phantom as Creek. we cook them together. It's so good. It's fantastic, yeah. Mm. Yeah, Graham, if you want to describe it for them. Yeah, so um, we're about to release so our new 2021 rosé. Um, it'll be the first one of the first wines by Mark Berenger, our, our new winemaker. Um, and it's just a classic, fresh Provence style. Uh, but it's a beautiful blend, mainly of Malbec and Syrah. Uh, so it's got some nice nuances to it, some nice complexity, um, and this really nice fresh, dark uh, red berry fruit to it as well. But still, really crisp, really clean, really dry, really refreshing. Um, it's it's going to be, I believe we'll be releasing it in July, so it'll be something to look forward to right in the height of summer. Mm -hmm. So just getting back to uh, Fred's question, sorry about that. So yes, the fiddlehead, you add it in the mushroom, and you would cook it in medium heat, right, Chef? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then cooking it for a while, and then you would add your uh, chopped uh, asparagus in there. And I see that uh, Chef has also added two blocks of the uh, butter inside. I mean, the more butter, the better. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just going to add one more. So I like it to be really thick. Um, so our risottos are actually almost done. Um, so to finish, we're going to add butter, and then we're going to fold in our cheese. Mm -hmm. And then that's it. I love that term, folding in. <laughs> so I start with one um, cube of butter. And then we'll just melt that down. And then keeping an eye out on your veg. Is there anything that I can help you with? Yeah, you want to mix this? Yeah, and then, of course. Of course. Actually, do you want to season it? <gasps> You're giving me the hard task? Yes. <laughs> I'm worried. Especially these are being served to our four guests. <laughs> I know. Oh, Manica. I'm worried. Here. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Chef is doing it. I'm too scared to do so it. So you don't want to over season your vegetables and your risotto because the parm is already salty enough. Mm. Um, yeah, and then we have more parm for garnish. So I'm going to add one more block or one more cube of butter. And then we're going <laughs> to... Is this French cooking? I am, I am trained. <laughs> yeah, I worked in a lot of French restaurants. Um, and then we're going to start adding our cheese at the very end, which is in like 30 seconds, and then we're good to go. Okay. And then I'm going to turn this off. This is pretty good. Okay. Nice and emulsified. There you go. I should also mention a wine like this has enough acid to its structure that it'll cut that butter and really refresh your palate with every, every sip and every bite you take. So now I'm adding a handful of Parmesan cheese. And again, it's your preference. Whatever, like how much you want to add is totally okay. So I guess once we mix that in, it's ready for plating. Yes. Okay, awesome. So what Chef has added was a handful of the Parmesan cheese. Again, it's really up to you how much you want to add that in. See, it's nice and thick. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to give it a taste, and then it should be good to go. OK. And meanwhile, just making sure everyone is on track, because we're quite busy in the kitchen. So if you guys are good, give me a thumbs up. OK, Lydia is good. Fred, are you guys doing good? Awesome. And I see Cassandra, her kitchen's really busy. And Len is good, Timothy's good. I see Fred's enjoying the wine too, as, as he's cooking. That's, in, that's important. So I did add, um, I added some seasoning to this. I added a bit of salt. Mm. And then I think I'm gonna add a little more cheese because I love cheese. Why not? You can't go wrong with too much cheese. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Always good. <laughs> and I can actually marry them together. So once we're done mixing it, I guess we can prep for plating. Yeah, you want to grab those four pretty bowls oh, yes. over there? Chef, can we do five plates? Five plates. <laughs> yeah, is there any extra ready, Chef? So that the, the rest of us can have a taste. Okay. <laughs> you want some prawns? Sure, I love some prawns. I, I will come to it. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. <Dato. laughs> 
Okay, so just a little more salt and then we're good to go. Okay. Our risotto is ready. Yay. So we're gonna start plating it. So. These are and beautiful it smells, bowls. It smells so good. <laughs> smells I know, it smells so amazing. Smells so I'm good. sure it smells it's just as good at home with the uh, chefs abroad here. Well, sure. you actually, so a good trick to flattening your risotto, just like tap the oh. bottom. Oh. Do you want to do that? Uh, sure. <laughs> Give it a try. Spank the risotto. Oh, it's quite hard. It's amazing tips that you share with us. Oh, it's all these little subtle tips, I you know, know. The tricks of the trade you pick up from you exactly. know, years of being in the kitchen, right? We'll never know until we have somebody professional exactly. teaching us. Oh, Manika, you're doing well. Good job. <laughs> potential, right? Are we you are, taking any apprentices? We, we are hiring, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> need that spanking. Yeah. That's spanking. <laughs> okay, just two more to go. Whoa. So let me see how everybody's doing. Is your risotto ready? Is it all good, all seasoned? No. Not yet. Okay, no Brad worries. Brad is still working on it. <laughs> yeah. And I do see everyone else is quite busy with their risotto. Take your time. And again, you don't have to plate it right away because um, you can take your time in terms of the plating because we do have a competition which you can actually win some amazing prizes. All right, so right now, after we kind of spanked the <laughs> beaver soda a little bit, <laughs> we're going to garnish it with the fried vegetables. Okay, and I'm just going to show you guys a close up of one of the plates. Look how delicious this looks. Mm -hmm. I really and like this also place. It looks beautiful. Smell amazing. Mm -hmm. Very creamy. Okay, so this is basically what it looks like right now. All right. Nice. And right okay. now. <laughs> that smells so amazing. The extra stock, mm -hmm. we can pour it over just like that. And then I will show you how to garnish one, and then I can follow you and finish it. Mm -hmm. it looks really good. Mm -hmm. It smells amazing, chef. I'm really hungry. Okay, so right now we are just uh, garnishing it with the sliced cheese that we prepared earlier. I guess just placing it more on the cheese. Plate. Yeah, more Thanks. cheese. <laughs> yeah, just like that, and then I will follow you with the asparagus. Okay. Here you go. Oh, awesome. Okay. Or maybe like, let me just show the camera a close up on what it looks like with, with the cheese. So just something like this, very simple. Yeah, so just something like this, very simple. Just like that. Okay, let me continue with the rest <laughs> as Chef is garnishing with the asparagus. So, Chef, is the garnish one of your favorite points in making a dish? I think you get to be kind of artistic at this point, you know? Yeah, so basically right? I like to uh, just like look at the plate as if it was a canvas. Because, um, yeah. you know, cooking is an art and plating mm -hmm. is an art. I guess right now I'm using my creativity too. <laughs> you know, good thing I'm not in the competition. Because I'm, I'm looking at Fred's plate, like the plate that he did for the previous dish, it was amazing. And then also all the other participants on Zoom, their plating looks so amazing. And I also see that everyone's really busy cooking their risotto. Um, is anyone's risotto done right now? Have you guys tasted it yet? Have you guys had a chance to taste it to see if you need a little bit more seasoning? Because as Chef said, you should taste it as you go. Good 
唔肯講啊。好。We're just wrapping up with a couple more cheese and asparagus, and we are all done. All right. Wow, this is amazing. It looks amazing, and. I'm part of the plating too, which I'm really proud. Yes. I know, just the cheese though. Okay, and then we're. You've never done this before. I rarely cook. I only really? know how to cook instant noodles, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Um, All right, so, so I'm gonna garnish mm -hmm. with a little bit of olive oil. Okay. Awesome. And that's it. All right, so it looks very delicious. And actually, right now, I wanna take a group photo with everyone. I know not a lot of you. Are done with this dish yet? No pressure. I know. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh. Cassandra's very nice, very nice. And also Lydia's is done too. Awesome. Okay, I, I know Fred is really busy right now cooking the risotto. And then what about Timothy, Lynn, Vivian, and Nisha? Are you guys all good? Not yet, okay, Vivian. Okay, uh, no worries. I like this plate. It looks amazing. I know. It smells even better. It okay, <laughs> it does. Should we actually just still take a group photo right sure. now? Like, yeah. Sure. I guess we can all, the guests, do you guys want to? Uh, I guess uh, Aaron can help us turn the, this. Uh, around and yeah. we invite the guests to come over to the kitchen maybe mm -hmm. and then just show your face or if you have the previous dish show it up and then we can take a big group photo it's okay if you're not done with the risotto yet we just want to kind of capture this moment together as we're cooking because today this is actually our first time doing a hybrid one with live guests joining yeah. us today and also Exciting. our participants so we want to capture this moment and yeah we certainly want to Thank uh, Trail Appliances again mm -hmm. for letting us use this beautiful kitchen. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> With everything, like all the equipment. I know. All so it's stunning appliances. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. So I guess let's look into our camera and then whatever dish you have, if you have your risotto ready, hold it up against uh, towards your camera. And then if you don't, it's okay. Maybe hold up your spot prawns. And then with our guest, um, should they come over yeah. on this side? Can we invite you? Yeah, Why don't come you come join us on this side? Come yeah. join us on this side. We would like to have everyone in okay. this Other side photo. of the kitchen. <laughs> guest, yes. come on, come on, come on, come on. The special guest will come. We'll, we'll just be creative. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, really nice. yeah. I really like it. I like these plates like a lot. In the middle. In the middle. Okay. You get in the middle. Oh, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> okay, let's look straight into the camera and then we all say cheese, okay? One, two, three, cheese. cheese. Let's just take another one just in case. So look straight into the camera. One, two, three, cheese. cheese. Awesome. Thank Yay. you, guys. Thank you so much, Chef. So, um, we're ready for the food. <laughs> yeah, we are so ready for the food. And um, it's okay if you guys take your time in terms of the plating, it's perfectly fine. And then in terms of the competition, as I've mentioned before, we do have a friendly competition online for the best looking photo of your dish. Um, so be sure to post your photos and also even your cooking process online and share with us. Tag our social media accounts and make sure to use the hashtag CharityCooking2000. 22, so we can all see your creation. Mm -hmm. West Coast Cuisine with Wine Pairing is the fourth class of the series. Next month, we have our final cooking class and we're going to feature indigenous cooking and I'm sure you will not want to miss out on this fun and interactive cooking class. So be sure to follow everything goes virtual.com, social media and also website for the first hand information. And once again, I want to thank you, Chef. And also thank you, Brown, for joining us here today and teaching us these really fabulous dishes. And also thank you to all our participants on Zoom and also our live cast guests for joining us today. And also thank you to all our sponsors for making this happen. So I guess for now, we will say bye. And then I hope to see you guys in our next class next month. Bye for now. Bye. And then if you guys want to stay a yeah. bit to chat, the you, can feel free. Open. Yeah, you can feel free to stay and chat with us. Um, or even like finish cooking your dish. That's perfectly fine. You don't have to leave right away. But yeah, let's actually, should we 
Let the guests try. Should we, <laughs> should we dig in? Should we eat? Unfortunately, this is not for us. I know, we I know. We, we do have uh, extra for us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll ask the sponsor. <laughs> Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank no, I need a phantom tree. Oh, tree. We, I think we have some of their wine in our wine cellar already. Pour some, can we pour some yeah. wine? Which or, um, would you like? We have everything. We have everything, huh? Uh, do you guys have those bottles with the fancy uh, ceramic on it? With the, with the ceramic? That's the what are you pointing at? <laughs> I'll give it.